You know what Kevin loves? Eating. You know what Kevin's doing? Getting married. I'm not saying the two are connected, but maybe if you use our sponsor, Blue Apron, to eat, someone will love you. Blue Apron. I, I wrote this ad again. Blue Apron makes cooking simple and delicious. Each week, they send you pre portioned ingredients. You follow the step by step instructions. Blammo! You've got a dish to be proud of. No more eating out of the trash, YouTube user Matt Bell. They. Got warmed smoked trout and asparagus salad with fingerling potatoes, garlic croutons this month, man. Stop being out of the trash. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash greggy. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash greggy. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. And stop being out of the trash, YouTube user Matt Bell. Andy, what's your topic? Um, should we should we talk about bubblegum? <laughs> you can do whatever you want. I thought we had a different one, but I, I'm it down was, for whatever well, you want. I kinda Don't wanna... fucking call an audible. That's should not we how to show it. <laughs> we <laughs> plan everything to the T. You're right. You're right. We'll do bubblegum on this channel. Time. We'll do bubblegum. We can talk about time. bubblegum. This is gonna be every time you're on the show. You're gonna you're gonna auto, you're gonna you're gonna audible? fake. You're gonna yeah. fake the fact. Well, that we'll do bubblegum another time. Okay. Um, is this yours? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I just stepped on it. Um. So, my topic is going to be dog shit. Tra- <laughs> traveling to another to a new city. Moving or traveling? Moving. Okay. Moving your whole life, much like I did. Much like all of us did. Run, run me through it. Run, you're the most recent. How's right. it going? Uh, it's going well so far. Yeah. Uh, I think it's. I've become. <laughs> Don't say <laughs> just well. Yeah, just well. <laughs> Don't listen uh, to the enforcer over there. Yeah. Nick, there's a weird part of your hair in the back. Greg, can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, there you oh, go. Thanks. There you go. Appreciate that. I didn't yeah, think it was showing up on little, camera, so I wasn't going to let it be. No, it's just, it, just, just my throwing you off. My, it's these cameras. Throwing you off. Oh, these, these cameras. cameras. Yeah. Camera one. Nick, are you looking at my hair in that? What's that? That sufficient detail just to check my hair. No, it looks, looks great. great. You, got, great. you got that no, carefree rocker trying, hair, though. I've been trying to copy your hair, Nick. I love it. That's looking good. You got the hair where you walk in and you're wearing tight pants. And like your your boot has a little bit of a heel, <laughs> and maybe you got like a six string guitar. Just oh, is it? Just, is it? Are people just, ready for this? I do actually have some Peters. It? I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Shall I bring it? You just go like this, <laughs> and it comes out from behind you like a fucking samurai sword. And you know, I'm gonna bring guitars. So you, you moved to this new city. Sorry. It's going pretty well. Why do you hate really fun, well. Greg? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you, you know, just why do you hate fun? Are you still mad about rises? It's not a bad. I'm not mad at all. The, the, trust me, the internet's with scr- me on this who one. Who wants scratches? Who wants scratches? That maybe is going to be a movie everybody looks back in five years and be like, man, we were nope. too hard on that one. No, we're not. That was a good one. That was a fun one. That was a comic book come to life. With the exception, you want to know my biggest problem with Batman v Superman, Andy? <laughs> There's the, my biggest problem with Batman v Superman. It wasn't is great. When he shoots him around, when he drags Superman in and then slowly spins him around and knocks him into pillars. That's, I'm like, objectively, that's the only problem with the movie. Do you think so? Everything else was perfect. Got to cut that scene. <laughs> Anyways, movie new city. Just, they just speed that up a little bit. Oh, we got to fucking just cut it out. This need to be there. Okay. It's similar to Wonder Woman when she gets the sword. It's just like, why do we need this? Yeah, that's a good point. So I drove across three, four different states. You did. What's, be- what's between Texas and California? New Mexico, Nevada, deserts. Yeah. Nevada. I don't know which route you took. Uh, I don't though. know if I, I don't think I drove through Nevada. You probably just drove through Arizona, right? Yeah. yeah. You'd have seen a, you'd have seen a casino, like. Yeah, you're right. No, I just saw a bunch of deserts, saw a bunch of beautiful landscapes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the process of moving and putting everything into my car, sure, and driving for two night, three nights, four days, something like that. Um, have you all done anything similar to that? I know, I mean, you know, you were from Chicago. Whatever. Did you just fly over here? What sort of? Are you not familiar with the story? Huh? Well, Greg nearly died, I think. Yeah, that's the story. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm not familiar with that. So story. I went from Chicago to Missouri, and I mean for school, right? Mm-hmm. And that was going. My parents drove me down, dropped me off, went back, and then for like uh, Thanksgiving, all freshman year, I didn't have a car. And then I got a car. I, I would drive back and forth, everything else. Um, that I mean, going there that first time, going to college at 18, I was so ready to be out on my own and be not an adult, but what you think is going to be an adult. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I was ta- telling Nick the other you day, could masturbate anywhere. Well, turns out. I mean, I had a roommate, but yeah, you could. That's legal, is it? No, no. Oh, <laughs> it's America, man. I thought about Free I mean, speech. It's so weird to masturbate with a roommate. Anyways. <laughs> uh, it was so exciting to go there and <laughs> with one. Yeah. I'm glad you, I mean, you know, whatever. Kevin, check your fucking phone. Um, <laughs> 
no, it, like moving there was awesome because it was the liberation of like, I'm going to go do this. It's going to be brand new. It's the first time on my own. I, I, I'm an independent person on that level, right? Where mm -hmm. I actually want to go out and do that and live those experiences. And then I got comfortable. Yeah, there for you know, a while. I, I did the four years of school, then a year and a half of the paper, and then IGN hired me. And so when IGN hires me, they're like, well, how fast can you be out here? And I'm like, well, you know, I started going through the fact that, oh, I have a house and I have a lease through this. And I was like, two weeks. Fuck it. I, I'll blow up everything and I'll be there in two weeks. And they're like, oh, shit. All right, great. So what I did is I rented a U-Haul to bring, because I, I, I was going to keep it with, it with my ex-wife. I was going to keep the house we had, we were the lease we had with her and our other roommate and leave all the stuffed furniture with her. Then I was going to take the uh, mattress that I, or spare one and take all the shit out there, right? And then I was going to bring out the car I had, which was a Mustang. And uh, hell yeah! I woke up that morning, uh, went, got picked up the U-Haul, brought it back. They gave me the thing. I went out there to hook the car up to it, and I read the pamphlet totally haphazardly. I'm just like, well, I got time to kill. I think I think it was that Mike's wife was like gonna shower or whatever, and then say goodbye, and then we're gonna go. And I'd already loaded the car, and I read the pamphlet. And the pamphlet's like, if your car is a front wheel drive vehicle, this will fucking destroy it. And I was like, huh, I think it is. I called my mom. She's like, yeah, that's all right. You can't do that. And I was like, fuck. So I had to drove way out of the way, 30 minutes the wrong way, because I was going to drive Missouri to San Francisco. Drove the wrong way to pick up this other fucking sled for the car. Came back, put the car on it. Then I started. So I started late, but I was going and I was excited. And so I went from Missouri and it was either that I could go, and this is in, what is it? This is end of February. And I could either go north with a thread of snow or go south with a threat of tornadoes because they're having horrible rains from you shit always down pick there. tornadoes on this i have a i mean growing up in the midwest i have a, a fear of tornadoes have you seen twister Tornado so fuck don't. that don't i've seen tornadoes it. in real life or funnel clouds starting to spin not Fair real things i understand but anyways i was like fuck that i can deal with snow i'm from chicago go up driving in nebraska checking at a hotel great go to bed wake up the next morning it's something ridiculous like four o'clock and i'm gonna hit the road i'm gonna do this i'm gonna, i wanted to get the rockies that day it was my thing and came downstairs and looked at the TVs and all the TVs were the weather channel. And it was like, there's a blizzard coming in to, you know, the Northern United States. And I'm looking at it and I, I have to look at a map now. I think it's I-80 that cuts, there's a, there's a highway that cuts straight through Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and the blizzard was mainly north with literally a triangle going across the highway. And in my head, I'm like, I just punch through that. Yeah. I'm fine. You go fast. You know what I mean? Yeah. You go you know, 90 miles I mean, an hour. How many miles can that be long. wide? I can get through that. Five no miles. problem. This isn't going to slow me down. Miles get it ready to 80 miles an hour. You just fucking so I pour man. the coffee, go out I there, get in the U-Haul. And by the way, uh, when I told my father this plan, like I'm going to tow the U-Haul and drive across country, he was like, you've never done that before. And I was like, you never do it till you do it. <laughs> and my dad yeah. now, and then you like oddly enough, same words he told the first person he had sex. <laughs> the, sub, <laughs> the subtext of that story, of course, is my father saying, "You can't do this. You're yeah. not man. You're not man enough. You don't know what you're getting into." I'm like, "I'll be fine," and not in like a shitty way. My dad trying to, you know. Yeah. Anyways, please don't kill yourself. I go and sure, it's still dark out. It's start, it's snowing. I'm driving this thing, and the roads are rocky, and I'm going, 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 going. And I'm driving, and what I had done is I used my PSP as my media player, and what I had done is downloaded every one up show every game scoop and at the time IGN is AFK podcast and that's all I was listening to on my way out there just like I'm gonna get to know these people I'm gonna know the industry better than anybody when I get there and so I'm just driving 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 and slowly it dawns on me that I'm the only car on the road like there's no one it's getting snowier it's dark still and I'm like, that's weird and so there's a Dairy Queen and I pulled off the ramp and pulled in this Dairy Queen it's all big rig trucks in this Dairy Queen and people inside I walked in I'm like hey what's going on and they're like Get off the road. There is a blizzard coming, you idiot. We're in the middle of a blizzard. I'm like, what, what do I do? I'm a fucking U-Haul towing a Mustang. They're like, you, 15, 15 minutes ago, you passed a hotel. Drive back to that. It's like, all right, cool. And here's a soft serve. Exactly. So I wish. DQ. That's what I like about Texas. That's their advertising. Oh, I don't know that ever. Yeah, it's okay. bullshit. I didn't. I thought they were only in Texas. Go on. I drive out of the Dairy Queen, and like it was, it was super. It was a super simple highway overpass Dairy Queen. Drive out of the Dairy Queen the way I, you know, the opposite way I came. Come over the overpass to come down and go, you know, hang a left and go back. And as I like, come down the slope of the overpass, black ice, and I just slide, slide. And it's like one of those things where I'm just like going past where I'm supposed to exit, and I'm like, huh. What the fuck do I do? You know what I mean? And in front of me is, you can't see very far. It's snowing that hard now. But it's just, uh, you know, I don't know what you call it, two lane road where there's the one, there's, you know, me yeah. and oncoming. Mm. And I'm like, well, fuck, I can't reverse. There's no traction. It's black ice. And I'm, dra I'm dragging this fucking Mustang, of course. 
So I'm like, what I'll do is go further into it. I will go further down this random ass road. And in my head, I'm thinking, I know Columbia. I know Missouri. At some point, I'm going to pass a church that has a parking lot. I'll be able to pull in and swing around. It can't take that long. And you can pray. And I'm, Exactly. <laughs> I drive, drive, drive down this road. And I pass like, you know, one house. Ten minutes later, and I, it's it's barren ass Nebraska. It's in the middle of a snowstorm. I'm going super slow, but I just I keep going. Like I got it. Well, what else can I do? I can't. There's no way for me to three point turn this because it's now elevated too, where there's ditches on each side. I'm like I can't do anything. And we're going, 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 and finally, the real blizzard hits, and the wind starts rocking me back and forth. Like it's, this motherfucker's gonna tip over with me in it, and I'm like, I'm 23, and I'm like, I don't You're know. Terrified. Exactly. I'm oh, shitting my man. pants. I'm like, and finally, I'm driving, driving, driving. I finally see on my right this little trailer. And I'm like, okay. And I look into the yard and you can faintly see the outline of a circular driveway of like you come in, circle back out and come back up. And I'm like, this is my only shot. I got to take this shot. I got to see what happens. I, hopefully it's asphalt. Hopefully it's gravel. Come down. It's mud. I get three fourths of the way in and just start spinning my tires. And, uh, or maybe one fourth, I should say. And I'm like, fuck. And so I look at this little trailer that's there. No, you know, there's like a truck, but it's not like connected. It's just a mobile home in the middle of nowhere. Get out of the tractor or the uh, U-Haul, walk up to the door and knock on the door. And this old elderly man named Earl opens the door. And I'm like, hey, sir, sorry, I did this. I'm stuck. Can you, can I use your phone? He's like, he looks at it, he's like, I got a tractor. I can pull you out. And I'm like, really? Like, it's really, it's a heavy load. Got a lot of stuff in this thing. And he's like, no, no, I got you. No big deal. I'm like, oh, thanks. So he takes like 10 minutes. He puts on a snowsuit, comes outside, goes into this little tiny shed, opens it up and brings out a John Deere tractor half the size of this it's like a riding lawnmower brings it out like this with a chain and i'm like earl i don't know if this is gonna he's like no no it'll work it'll work and he goes over there and hooks the thing to the u-haul and goes and he just starts spinning tires too and because it's, it's still snowing like crazy this that and the other he's like here's what you do go over to the you know because it's one of those trailers where you walk up the stairs and mm -hmm. there's a platform he's like leaning up against the platform is a piece of plywood yep. don't mind the cats bring it over here and i was like don't mind the cats he's he like yeah a bunch of a bunch of feral cats live under there don't worry about it. i'm like oh, okay so i grab this thing and rip it away and it's just immediately punched in the face with all his cat urine smell like these cats have just uh. been living I'm like whatever got to do it so i go over there and i shove it under the tires of the car and it's like particle board it's exploding in my hands as i try to get it and i'm mm -hmm. doing the tires and it's just like not happening and i was like all right you can use my phone i'm like all right great get in the car update my parents and uh, ex-wife, hang up the phone, and then just scream and pound on the steering wheel. You know what I mean? Get out, walk in, use Earl's thing. And I for, I think Earl's in Butler, uh, Nebraska. And then this is going to be rough now, but something like 30 miles away, not far, is Kearney. That's the next big town. And uh, I pick up the phone, go through the phone book, find, you know, hey, we fucking pull big rigs out of things. And we're, you know, I'm like, great. Call them like, hey, I have this, U-Haul, Mustang, stuck. And they're like, yeah, we can come get you. I'm like, great. How long do you think it's going to be? And they're like, well, they shut down the highway because of the blizzard. I'm like, fuck, that would have been helpful to know. <laughs> Shit, that would have been good to know. And they're like, yeah, shut down the highway because of the blizzard. So it'll probably be six to nine hours. And I was like, all right, thank you. <laughs> and I hung up the phone and did that thing where I just took that deep breath. I'm like, so Earl, going to be hanging out with you for a while if that's okay. And explain to me. He's like, oh, no big deal, man. Blah, blah, blah. Come, and, on, come over here. I'm going to show you my collection of heads. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing is like, I put up a blog post when I first got to IGN. Not, I was in this entire story and then also detailing Earl's trailer because it wasn't like nice. It was like Earl was alone in a trailer and all this yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? And I think it was my aunt who hit me up and was like, you weren't making fun of him, but it kind of comes off at yeah, points where you were. And I, was, and I was like, yeah, he saved my life. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I could have blown over on the road. I could have done this. I could, he could have not asked the door. He could have told me to fuck off. You know what I mean? He could have been furious that I was stuck in his yard. Yeah. He didn't do any of those things. He sat me down and made me coffee, fucking and we hell. hung out for fucking eight hours watching March Madness on a snowy TV. Hell yeah. And then finally they came, they pulled me out, and I drove back to the hotel that was 15 miles away or whatever and sat there and called everybody and updated them. Oh, actually, I pulled in, and I had, like, I'm exhausted. I'm emotional. I pull in, and there's a sign that's like, trucks this way and cars that way. And I had, like, like mental breakdown. Where do I go? <laughs> Which one of those is me? Exactly. Yeah. So over where the trucks were, immediately got stuck in two, like, uh, rivets where I couldn't move the tires. Got out of the car in tears and flagged down a trucker. And I was like, oh, and he's like, I got it. Yeah, don't worry. And he got in the car, drove it out for me, parked over, and, like, where there wasn't anything. And then the next morning, I woke up to my mom calling me at uh, four in the morning. No, no. My mom called me at six in the morning. And was like, 
she's in tears and she's like, I'm looking at, it's only getting worse. Don't drive, come back to Missouri. I'll pay for your flight. We'll figure all this out. And I'm like, all right, fine. And then I called Jeremy Dunham and woke him up and I go, and he's like, hello. And I go, wakey, wakey, it's Greg Miller. And he goes, it's four in the morning. And I'm like, sorry, I uh, almost died on the way out here. I'm going to do this. He's like, all right, whatever. And so then I flew to California. And so he's like, it's like, you know what time it is on the Pacific Coast? Like, what? You know what I mean? Oh, it's going to be funny. He goes there, then he loops around. I'm going to make an awkward thing. Your brain's like one of those swizzle straws that like just goes all loopy. That's, yeah. That's very true. Yeah. That's true. So you almost died. And then you arrive in California. Yeah. You know, however many days later, a week later. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah. How long did do you feel like it took you to get acclimated to the city? Like, I, I assume, did you have any friends out here? Or no, no, I came out here sight unseen. I, I got I got hired at a, a different IGN. You know, what I mean? we talk right. about now where they're like, we flew oh, people yeah. out and they got a SWAT team, and it was like seven hours of interviews. I got contacted, interviewed, and hired within twenty four hours. Okay. Never made it. Never came out here for an interview. Never met Dunham or Roper in oh, person. Man, didn't do any stuff. So lucky. So I came here. Yeah, I've seen your MySpace page. We like it. We think exactly. <laughs> well, they, they read my blog. It was very interesting. Uh, but got out here, yeah, and like to feel acclimated, to feel like it was normal, it took forever. I mean, I don't think it, I don't think, it's one of those things like, you know, I just moved again. And so like now the how the apartment is starting to feel like home, but it's all, it's just because it's normal. I've been doing it now in a, a routine. Sure. Whereas like, I think there was a different routine back then because it was, I'll never forget coming out of the airport, getting into the cab and saying, take me to IGN, 800 Marina Boulevard. And I didn't say IGN. And, and then I had to show him on a, I loaded my computer and put it in sleep mode because I knew he wouldn't know where Marina Boulevard was. And I showed mm -hmm. him whatever. But then there's a big, you know, South, uh, South San Francisco mountain, which isn't a mountain, but it's a giant hill that we don't have in the Midwest. And right. I remember looking at it like, what the Same fuck? here. Yeah. And like getting there and like the first thing I did in that parking lot while I was waiting for Chris Roper to come down, I took really shitty Nokia cell phone photos of the palm trees in the parking lot because that was so... What a weird fucking right. thing for this guy from the Midwest. <laughs> like, text your family back home. Like, there's palm trees in the parking lot. I and one of the white water. Matrix. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it weird for you to be sitting in an office where if you look out the window, you can see the ocean? Yeah, absolutely. It's got to yeah. be strange, Like, right? sitting on the roof. When we're on the roof and I'm looking out there. Yeah, that's definitely really, really odd. Because 10 years of living in Austin. Right. Fucking 20 years of living back home. It's flat. And... Uh, like just driving down the streets being able to see crazy fucking hills and like looking up and like man we are elevated right now you know like it's really really bizarre now as far as the culture goes the culture is super similar to austin right sure like, the vibe is different i think i like it more here because it's so much prettier to look at shit here sure like uh, the vistas are a lot nicer uh compared to austin and just anywhere in texas really have you been up to marin yet to see like the, the redwoods and things like that no no you nothing should. like that sure. Yeah. It's indoor, basically. It look, it, that's where they shot it. So it's crazy. Yeah. So I'm still getting used to it, but luckily I have not only you guys, but, you know, when I moved out here, if I didn't know any of you all, and if I had no friends here, I'd probably be way lonelier. But I moved sure. out here, and I have not only have mm -hmm. you guys, but I have, you know, Sean and Barrett and Best Alyssa. friends you yeah. made through the community. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, people who are like, when I, when I got here, Sean would be like, hey, let's go out to eat. Or... Bear to be like, hey, come over and watch this TV show with us, you know. Mm -hmm. And ever and you know, it's it's been a lot smoother a transition than I could have ever expected. Mm, that's great. Uh, that's good to yeah, know. It's awesome. Yeah, that, I mean, I that was always it. the uh, strength and weakness to an extent. Thank you so much. I, if you're watching at home, I'm doing this uh, community town hall thing tonight, and we're running late, so I'm getting really close to it. So I got to start okay. setting it up. Um, and I'll adjourn. I want this topic to keep going. I think it's great. Um, that was always the strength and weakness to IGN to an extent is that you worked with your friends. And I remember how weird that was when I talked to co -work, former coworkers and then family members too. Of like, oh, that's great. That works so great. What do you do on the weekends? What do you do at night? And I'm like, well, all of us from the office <laughs> go yeah. to the movies or the bar or come back to the office to play games. And they right. thought that was so strange, but it was that we all were the same age bracket. We all had the same interests. It yep. was so easy to fall into. Like, of course, this is what we're gonna do. We're all friends. It was a real. It was a really weird time too when Greg and I started IGN because we started what like six months away from each other, something like yeah, that, something eight like months, that. where we were all like the entire editorial department, with the exception of um, a couple of the guys, were pretty much around the same age and or maturity level. Um, there was Doug Perry, who was always a little bit older than everyone, but same maturity level. Well, as, like I always like, come in, me. like you know, it was that thing where. We came in right as the old guard burned out. Yeah. Right as the founders who right were. Right as Tal and Pear. Right and, as Dunham was like having fog, kids yeah. and Roper was getting married. And it was like they were all 
aging up right as we all got there and it was like you don't get me wrong I, I, I was in the new class to this class but like Charles and Brudvig and Clayman mm-hmm. and you and like the entire video team and Brennan Ty and, and, and yeah and Ty, Baradon, like yeah. it was that thing of like cool we all are don't know we're all expats from somewhere else and we just want to fucking party and do whatever yeah that was actually one of the cool things too because when I came here I knew no one I didn't have a single person that I knew up north. I took the job. It was my my experience was completely opposite of Greg's. I interviewed for the job for, with Fran uh, because my buddy actually like physically put my uh, resume on his desk and was like, "You should look at this guy. He's a great guy. He's a good friend of mine." I know you don't know me that well, but whatever. So Fran called me just kind of on a recommendation. We had a great interview, and I didn't hear back from him for like three months because I think Classic they had Fran. they had another mm-hmm. candidate that they wanted that I think was from I want to say it was from Canada, and they just couldn't get him. They couldn't figure out the 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 like getting visa. him into the country and all the yeah. visa stuff. So they went with their second choice, which was me. So Frank gives me a call and I, he's like, Hey, how's it going? Really liked you. Look, we need someone up here. We need someone up here basically in the next week. Can you do it? And I was like, yes, yes, I can. And then I'm, I'm like, it was only, it was the first time in my life when I had committed something and then had to figure out how to do it. And that was like, I'm like, fuck, this is like, this is crazy. And I moved up North. I packed all my stuff, my brother and one of my brother's good friends and, uh, and another friend all got in a car. We had a party out of it. We drove up drove me up and I had found a guy on Craigslist and I called him. I was like, yeah, I'd love, I'd love to rent your room if it's still available. Cause it was in Brisbane, which is right up the road or right down the road from us. Um, and IGN was in Brisbane. I had no idea that Brisbane was a tiny little town that everything closed at four <laughs> o'clock. And like, I didn't know anything any better show up at the guy's door and he's like, Oh yeah. Like I didn't know if you were serious. I'm not sure if I really want you to be here. And I'm like, well, why don't we have a uh, interview right now? And if you like me, I'll stay. And if not, I'm totally fucked. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, we should just, figure that out right yeah. now. So if we you like me or not. So I was like, look, I'm, I don't need to commit to anything. Like, like whatever. I'm like, just give me a month. If you don't like me, I'll find another place. It's not a big deal. So the guy was like, yeah, totally cool. And he had the world's weirdest cat. And then I ended up leaving quickly afterward. Anyway, but yeah, we all got together. And it was me. And it was my buddy Brennan. And it was Fran. And it was Eric. And all of us were from different parts. Like, Eric was from Florida. Fran's from Chicago. Brennan's from Louisiana. His friend Craig was from Louisiana. And we all were of the same age and all found each other and just instantly clicked and I was like thank god and I remember knowing that Brennan was going to be my best like one of my best friends forever because like the very f- like one of the first nights I was there he was like hey man uh, a bunch of us are going to go get some Taco Bell and go back to my house and watch uh, movies and play some games you down I'm like Let's yeah, do I it. can get behind that. <laughs> so I yeah. definitely can get behind I can that. Do that. By the way, I was on a low carb diet back then, and there's nothing worse than trying to explain to the person behind back, back then. Back then, <laughs> <laughs> well, specifically for this story, because every time he had a, he, uh, Brennan uh, lived in Foster City with uh, uh, with my buddy Craig, and they lived in a one bedroom ap- apartment, and Brennan slept on the couch, and Craig slept in the room. I have, to this day, I have no idea why, because it was Brennan's apartment, but um, we used to go to Taco Bell, which is a block and a half away, and I would order a bowl of meat every time. I'd be like, "Can you just put three sides meat. of meat?" <laughs> in a bowl with some hot sauce and some and some and every time without fail and they're like don't they had, disrespect it they had to go get the manager up. and be like is this something we could do is this like <laughs> is this something <laughs> people like, do to, here I saw him like having to C++ plus plus hack science? the fucking computer to figure out how to get that to print in the back and eventually they just figured it out um, but yeah it took me a while to adjust in fact I don't think I ever fully adjusted I love San Francisco I love Northern California but I always feel a little displaced sometimes too when I go back to SoCal I'm like I don't really belong there either and up here I'm like I guess this is my life and it's beautiful and there are way worse places to live. But in the back of my brain, I never actually thought I'm, and I, I still to say, I don't think I'm going to spend the rest of my life in Northern California. At some point I'm like, I'm going to go back down to, to LA or SoCal and just and, and be down there for the rest of my life. It's a very strange feeling. Interesting. Yeah. So, so I was going to say when I, um, when I finished university, um, Uni, as y'all call it, we call it uni. Indeed, yeah. I like. I, I feel so at home. I, I, I know. A lot, Andy. I know a lot about the UK. And you, you, can you like for a while? Should... I have to go to the loo and get <laughs> some biscuits. <laughs> get some biscuits. Oh. And take the. Lips. Don't eat the biscuits out of the bathroom. And by the way, when you walk between <laughs> that floor and that floor, you have to mind the gap. That's what you have to do. Shout you out to London. You learned so much on your trip to London. I do. I fucking love London. By oh. the way, I'm giving you guys shit, but my wife lo- lived in London for a while. And uh, she, it was just the best experience. We had ever. a great meetup in uh, South Ken. It was fun. That was great. That was okay, good. so while you anyway, were at sorry. uni, so I was, at, so I'm, I was at uni, and I uh, applied for jobs in London. This was, I'm just going to share my age here. The dot com bubble had just burst. Mm-hmm. The, the finance industry where I was looking to apply for jobs, they, no one was recruiting, so I took a year out and basically dosed around for a year. Um, I went to like. Can you explain what that word means? 
DOST. Sorry, <laughs> apologies. Um, like disc operating. I'm not system sure what the. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not sure what the trans. I'm, you, I'm not sure what the means. translation. Is. People can extrapolate. Yeah, quite. You just fucked around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you fucked up. Pissed fucked off. off. You pissed off for a while. Yeah. yeah, so basically, like Thailand, Bali, Australia, That's New awesome. Zealand, um, across the states. Great fun. Uh, came back uh, to my to my home. Um, found my parents had divorced. Whoa. Which, which is a bit of a shock. Did they not tell you that? You didn't get a letter I, I kind of had a, yeah, I got a notice from the lawyers. Um, I had a bit of an indication, but I came back and they were like, oh, yeah, and we're selling your family home. Oh, by the way. Yeah, yeah. But exactly. Uh, so you're homeless. So I literally, I literally came back, was homeless. I, um, had, I, I went actually, I came, I went down to London to see some friends who'd already moved there straight out of university. So they moved out a year kind of before and they were like, Sorry, uh, Joycey, which is what they call me. Joycey. They, like, they were like, Joycey, what, what, why have you brought all your, um, why have they brought His all your stuff? Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <Is> that? <gasps> and it's complex. I mean, people in the UK are very sophisticated. They do. They're so creative. They're like, Joycey, why have you, why have you brought your, um, your uh, entire rucksack down? Are you staying for like a month? And I was like, no, this is all my belongings in a bag. They sold everything else. I don't, don't have anything else. It's <laughs> fucked up. I was like, so carrying it around. Um, me and my best friend from home, my oldest friend, um, a guy called Rich. Um, came down to London, like looked around a few places, found a found a place. We got we made an offer on it to stay there, got rejected. Ended up staying with one of his friends. He's a he's an actor. He was going to drama school, so we kind of moved down with a friend of his. Didn't know no job, living in London, which is you know apart from San Francisco, about the most expensive place <laughs> in the world you can live. Um, with no money, just been traveling for like a year. Um, so I used all you just whatever. Done. I was yeah. gonna say savings. I don't know any savings. No savings, just you, the money you had. Used, yeah, exactly. Burnt had already burnt through the overdrafts I had, moved down, and it's amazing when you're motivated to find a job, how effective you can be. Yeah. Um I think I, I it's really funny. I look back now and think I had like kind of six, eight weeks. Yeah. Six, eight weeks. Um, where I could have just been enjoying myself in London, no job, nothing. But at the time, I was frantically panicking yeah, how I was going to pay the next yeah. next uh, next um, rent rent bill. Um, found a job, fortunately, at a place called PwC, which is a large professional services firm. Joined there, and it was great. But it was like the panic and loneliness, and um, just kind of. I don't know, the, um, the the kind of uncomfortableness of being, like, it wasn't even, the new city was one thing, and that was pretty bad, um, but it's London, so it's great. Not having a job, that has its own kind of panics, but then also this kind of idea that I didn't have anywhere to go back to. It wasn't like I couldn't, I, I, I'm sure I could have, like, gone and stayed with one of my parents sure. at, somewhere, but, you know, like, that place that you called home, that kind of that rock, that foundation that you have just had kind of vanished. And I yeah. suddenly felt ankleless and like drifting. I was in London. I was sleep. I literally the first few nights I was sleeping on first of all the floor. Then I eventually got a, like an inflatable mattress and I slept on that. And then eventually like when, when all the, um, my belongings kind of got released from whatever, you know, security they had on them. <laughs> like, you know, after having the divorce, everything got put somewhere. Like I got that down. I actually started to feel like home. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's me and inflatable mattress and my, you know, my mask collection. Yeah, you know, or he bad figures. Love it. Mama, Love mask, it. mask. What? Right there. It's a show. Oh, fucking Nick, will you wrap this show up for me? So anyway, sorry, I, this yeah. is a great topic. Keep going. Yeah, I'll I just got to go do this thing you. I did. You're not so, mad, right? You understand? Go, 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 go do your thing. So for um, ever, you know, this is a question I'll put to you guys. Like, do you feel like this is some a level of rite of passage? Right? Do you feel like people need to do this in their life at some point? No. No. You think you it's okay to grow up and live and die in the same town you grew up in? Yeah. I mean, so I mean. I'm talking like cross country sort of sure. adventures. I, I don't think that's a rite of passage. I don't think anybody needs to necessarily do that. I think it's cool to to see different parts of the world that you may not have necessarily seen mm -hmm. if you stayed back home. Um, but there is a nice comfort about home where you, your family are there and your friends are there and that's where you grew up and everything's very familiar or whatever. Um, I do think it's important to get out of your parents' place and maybe move a couple cities down just to be away sure. a little bit. But sure. I don't think you have to move across the country. No, not at all. Yeah, I mean, I I, I kind of... I, I'm not just to disagree with Andy. I, sure. I hate to disagree with Andy. Oh, God. Um, uh, I, um, about so many I, I had this interesting conversation with my girlfriend, Dylan, um, about going on holiday. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit like 
that. I like that familiarity of sure. somewhere that you've been before. But then I, and I, I said, actually, there's yeah, everywhere is a new place until you've been there. Yeah. So, yeah, so if you, I, I, I kind of like the idea of going somewhere new. I like the idea of experiencing something new because until you have, you, you kind of fail to realize that there is a bigger world out there. Um, but I do like, I do like the familiarity of, of places that you know, whether it's home or whether it's sure, yeah. You know, uh, but I do think you need to kind of get out of, out of your initial radius to just kind of experience some of that and to know, so you can compare and contrast. You don't know what you're going to like until you partly what you know what you're going to dislike. I was uh, I was not a huge advocate of traveling until I met my wife. Uh, she travels for leisure and for pleasure, and I used to travel a lot for work. So I always yeah. think travel is synonymous with work, where you'd go, have to do a job, have to figure out how to do this complex job in a new setting where you don't have all your resources. Yeah. It was very stressful, and to this day, I think that really conditioned me to kind of be averse to traveling. Um, the great thing, though, is, and, and I do really cite London for this, London was the first time I landed in a city, and I was taken by it. And I was like, I want to spend more time here and I met all you guys out there and I met you know we had that Tom put together that kind of yeah, last yeah. minute meet and greet shout with out him. to T Hawk shout out to big old tizzles um, he put together that, that. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like what can I call him I call him the tiddly winks uh <laughs> He put together that incredibly, incredibly racially insensitive and culturally insensitive, uh, uh, you know, promotional image, and everyone came out. Nick is the beef awesome. eater. It was yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Um, but honestly, I walked around, and part of the reason why I wanted to do that was because I was like, I am enjoying the city so much that like I feel like if I left without meeting all the best friends here, or at least the people that I could gather in the f- five hours of fucking you know promotion or whatever, like I, I would be remiss if I didn't do that. And when everyone came out. Which, by the way, that bar was like a block away from where I was staying. Oh, was it? Yeah, we were staying in like a cool little... a nice part of the world. Well, we save up, but we like to splurge when we go in these hotels. And we, oh, yeah. yeah. We had, yeah, we went to... the Morocco was the other leg, so that was a lot cheaper than the London leg. Yeah, yeah. Um, with that. the exception of when we went glamping, which was a terrible experience. <laughs> but I think you really do... Um, you start to appreciate a couple things. Uh, you start to appreciate your your where you live. When you travel, yeah, yeah, because I think uh, it kind of gives you a good appreciation for like the comforts of home. But I think you also, and this is what I'm always mystified by, you always you start to really realize that everyone deep down is the same when you travel, and I think that's a very important thing. Like when you go to London, I've been to Morocco, I've been to all sorts of places now, all over Europe, um, South America, Central America, rather. Um, everyone is just there's just a lot of human beings down there doing their thing, yeah, yeah. And, you, and you got a lot more in common with them than you do the opposite. The if you just yeah, if you yeah. just kind of you know, take the time to actually talk to people. Um, but yeah, I've actually got the travel bug and we're going back uh, for our anniversary this year, our five year anniversary, we're going to Copenhagen. I've never been to Denmark before. Oh, cool. So I think that'd be kind of fun. Not, I don't think it's going to be London. Okay, I think, I think I'm going to miss London, but, uh, but yeah, there is something about y'all city that uh, is pretty, pretty fucking awesome. Well, you're always welcome back. Well, I appreciate that. Well, uh, I appreciate that. I'm going to pick you up. Uh, last question for you though. Do you think that my parents did the same thing? Well, not the same thing to me. That, that your parents did to you. But at one point, my, my I remember just distinctly getting a call from my, my mom. I think I was like 21 at the time. And she's like, hey, all those bills I'm paying for right now and all the food that I'm buying you, I'm not doing that anymore. Bye. <laughs> Click. <laughs> you have like, she was basically like, you have one month to come up with an extra like 800 bucks. And I was like, fuck. Damn. I don't know how to do that. And yeah. like, of course, you have to figure that out, right? You have to like, you have, and you're right. You're never, you never figure something out until you're forced to figure it out. Yeah, I think I that's an important rite of passage. That's kind of what I was alluding to. Is like at some point you have to think to yourself, I need to be my own person I, for I, better I, or for worse. It's kind of amazing what you can do when you have that duress or that um, necessity to do something. And I think you can do, you can do a lot more than you would expect to do when you are forced to do it. Yeah, and, and that's not to say I think that's a good situation to find yourself in well, but, but sometimes it's quite life affirming to I know think you're learning but I think yeah, yeah I think yeah, it's yeah, a growth yeah, yeah, experience yeah, yeah. Right? I think it's a good opportunity for you to go I don't think I can do this and then when you do it you go fuck I could that's yeah. cool that's yeah, really yeah. great what else can I do right and that was important for me like I would not have been able to pick up that phone and say yes to that offer from Fran to go to IGN without having been cut off from all my parents support granted I mean I say cut off my mom still made me food and brought it over all the time oh, yeah, it wasn't yeah. like if I was, oh, it wasn't, no, I was yeah, in dire yeah. straits right if I was like my god moving with you she'd be like thank you Jesus like, <laughs> it would have been amazing and she would have I'd probably still be living there today um, but yeah anyway guys this has been an awesome podcast yeah Polly D thoroughly really enjoyed it Andy C. I just Polly want to call G. him Polly D. <laughs> I, like, I like that. I know. Why, 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 why do they call him Joycey? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> what is D? I, I said, because I, 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 in my head, it's complicated. In my head, I was I trying to make was. a joke earlier of you looking oh, a little D like Polly D from the, from the, Jersey, from the Shore, Jersey Shore, a little bit, and then I thought your last name started with a D for some reason, and then you were like, no, my last name is I Joyce. Can, Joyce is not that hard to work. Just works in a very weird way. Not as weird as fucking Swizzle Stick over here. Ghost of Greg Miller. Thank you so much for joining us. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, it's Game of Greg Show. We're four, sometimes five, best friends gather on this table and bring topics together week by week, day by day, whatever. Yada yada yada, guys. Everyone, step thanks. Step by step. Day by day. I thought you were going for a bit of uh, new kids on the block there. Yeah, well, so oh, so we which were... one was the big new kids on the block song? That was step by step. Was it step by step? It's step by sing step. Sing it. Oh, I'm singing the sh- the show. Wait. He's singing oh. the show. It was a. Uh, I was uh, singing step T-G-I-F. by step. Ooh, baby, can you get to me, girl? What's that? That's not the big. But new it's kids another on the one. Block I, song. I, I, Dylan will know this. What's it? You what's, might, I, sing the. What's the most famous new kids on the block song? What? No, there was a different. There had to be a different. They're on a different side of the world. What are you talking about? Are we not talking? About, it got, got to us in about 2001. <laughs> We're all talking about Donnie Wahlberg's famous band, right? <laughs> Thanks for tuning yeah. in, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, I'll, I'll wrap it up. You sit there, fucking new kid on the block. <laughs> Everyone, it's, thanks for joining us. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Good job, Kevin. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here. Watch other videos down here. Click over here to go to the Patreon and go check out Kind of Funny Games right there. You can click right here and you'll go back and see a very old video. (laughs) Just say I'm making it up. Put something there. Fuck it. I don't care. Old.